Hi everyone, welcome again to another financial analysis video with myself, Moe Damin, and my colleague, Ted Wayman. So today we're going to be looking at a well-known British brand called Greg's. Uh, but before we go into that, just a quick note about the show and the purpose for the show, because there's been a bit of confusion out there, particularly amongst the financial community. So the purpose of our show is not to help you with investment advice, right? There are plenty of great people out there that are already doing that. We are here at an education platform. And in specifically, we are here to raise the education and knowledge for financial knowledge of the community, because this is an area that we have seen has been uh, really underserved and is still an area that, or a topic that a lot of people struggle with. So whether you're thinking about you know, whether you're a sales professional and you're selling to these businesses, whether you're an investor or, you know, whatever the profession is, if you're thinking about joining a company, knowing about the financials of the company that you're dealing with is fundamental to decisions and to the interaction that you have with that business. So that is what we're here to do. That is what Ted and I are very passionate about. So treat these videos as a way for you to um, raise your financial knowledge and a way for you to be able to analyze financial statements and draw some insights and conclusions and understanding about that company. So what we're going to be doing with Greg's is we're going to be looking at its annual statement. Uh, we don't often go into the quarterly statements, but what you're going to learn in these videos will help you analyze those quarterly statements faster and with more uh, detailed analysis. So do, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for our videos so that you can get access to more of those videos that we publish. So let's get on to Greg's. Um, so uh, for any of you that are not in the UK, this is a well-known brand, uh, a, a British bakery brand in the UK, mostly focused on savory products. Now, the company was uh, founded in, let me check my notes, 1939 in, in, a, in a city called Newcastle, which is just north of the uh, UK, north of England. And um, right now, they have around 1,953 stores with 20,000 employees, so quite a sizable business. And they serve 6 million customers per week. Now, they're famous for their sausage rolls. So here's some stats on sausage rolls. Um, they sell 2.5 million sausage rolls per week, which is a sizable number. Uh, they're also quite known for their donuts. And uh, statistics show that they sell 50,000 donuts per hour in the country so they they seem to uh they seem to uh satisfy a lot of uh the uk's palate so um very interesting business and uh this was a request from one of our viewers um so be active here is your video thank you for making the request and by the way you too can make a request as well in fact you know probably about 95 to 98 percent of our videos um, are, and the companies we analyze are requests from our viewers. So if you do want us to analyze a company for you and you're interested in them, do leave a note in the comments section and put some context behind why you find them interesting because the more context, the more interest that uh, provides for us, the more interest means the more likelihood that your video will be prioritized. So do leave a note in the comment section. Uh, before we go into the finances, uh, and stick around for a bit more detail about this, because this is going to be great context for you. Just a quick note about the shares on this business. So in the last, uh, well, they floated uh, on, in 1993. If you'd invested in that time, you would be sitting on a profit of around 3,900%. So benefit of hindsight, as Ted always says. Um, five, if you invested five years ago, your shares would have been up about 117%. Uh, and in the last year, your shares would have been up 1.7%. So stick around to, towards the end because we always look at those, that, those numbers and the share price and the movement just to give you some context around the financial, finances and the fundamental financial statement. So uh, with, that, uh, with that, Ted, over to you. Let's, uh, let's share what we found about this business and you know, some information around how they... Uh, how they kind of fared during the uh, COVID uh, pandemic and the lockdowns. Excellent. Okay, so um, good to see you, Moe. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, hello to all of our viewers. Um, so uh, as Moe says, we're going to jump straight into the annual report and accounts now. Um, the annual report and accounts, the latest uh, audited, um, so kind of you know checked by an independent auditor 
um, are January uh, 2021. But what we do have here is the preliminary results for the 52 weeks. So that's the year ended 1st of January 2022. So uh, don't forget, this will be looking at the 2021 um, uh, year of account. Uh, so um, commentary on uh, you know how the company has performed. Um, I'll leave if you are interested in that. You can download this off their website. Um, we are going to whiz through and look at the underlying numbers. So here we can see the income statement uh, for um, uh, Greg's. Uh, this is showing the income and the costs and the profit. So the first thing we notice sales sales up significantly. Uh, sales they've increased their sales a uh, year on year from a by about 52 percent now um do bear in mind that we're looking at 2020 2020 obviously time of lockdown um uh, and the pandemic uh and so lots of people weren't in the offices and so they weren't popping out to their local grades at lunch um and so we'd expect that in fact 2020 it was a 31 percent reduction on 2019 so uh if we were to compare this 1.3 uh, billion um, of turnover, this 1.2 billion of turnover with uh, 2019, uh, it was 1.168 uh, in 2019. So 1.168 gone to 1.229. So a small increase on 2019, which is probably our kind of the closest normal comparison. Um, gross profit um, is up, so quite a healthy uh, 64% there. So you can see uh, those sausage rolls, uh, they're selling those sausage rolls and the cost of selling those sausage rolls is in there. Um, uh, and basically what this is telling me is that for every pound you spend on a sausage roll, it costs them 36p to make the sausage roll and they get to keep 64p. So really, really high profit margin for this business and that's kind of you know the uh the you know the the attractiveness of it um you'll see lots of bakeries around you um uh, usually independent uh, and greg's has been very good at kind of taking a formula and starting to kind of you know to grow um uh, and to create this chain and um you know they are very very much focused on footfall so they look at you know where do people travel where do, where do they get the highest footfall uh, and that's where they're going to put their stores um then the cost of those stores that's kind of distribution and selling costs and the kind of the administrative costs um these are all the costs of kind of you know you know effectively and running the business um uh, are in there so that's another 51 percent or 51p in the pound which leaves them with an operating profit of 153 million uh, that's about 12p in the pound so if you buy if you spend a pound on a sausage roll uh, what they're really saying it costs them 36p to make the sausage roll which is pretty low but then another 51p to run the business that makes the sausage roll if that makes sense so those would be all the kind of you know cost of the stores um cost of the staff in the stores rent rate light heat and all that kind of stuff as well as uh, some of the head office um uh, and that brings us down to the uh, kind of the profit before tax, 145 million. Um, uh, I'll just clear my annotation and we'll just scroll down a little bit so we can see the bottom line. Uh, and there's the bottom line coming into view now, uh, which is 117 million. And you'll notice um, that from the previous year, um, they made a loss of 13 million. Um, 2019, they made a profit of uh, 87 million. So the profit, 2019 to 2021 has increased but obviously it dipped 2020 uh, but that will uh, be pandemic related um, and that's really the um, the income statement so nothing really surprising there pretty healthy this is about a 10 percent um, a 10 percent bottom line margin so every 10p in the pound um, every time you spend you know you buy a uh, a, a, a pork pie or a, or, a, or a sausage roll or whatever it is you're buying from Greg's a donut um, as Moe said um, you know every pound you spend on a donut um, the company gets to keep 10p in that pound that's a kind of approximation obviously that'll be across the board um, and uh, if you're working at Greg's you'll kind of know that there's you know different products will be um, have different profit margins attached to them um, so there's our income statement trading they're back up and trading which is good they're back up um uh, and uh, uh you know trading profitably let's look at their balance sheet so here um we're looking at the assets of the business 
um, the non-current asset, so a little bit of intangible. This is going to be, um, you know, perhaps goodwill. Um, where if they bought, um, you know, maybe they bought another chain of um, uh, uh, chain of shops, for example, um, uh, and, and they kind of amalgamated them. Uh, maybe uh, um, uh, other bits and pieces, I don't know, software, for example, in there. Um, really, the sort of the big numbers are property, plant, and equipment, three hundred forty-three million. It's not massive, don't forget, because they won't. They'll rent most of their stores. Um, uh, but what they do also have is right of use assets. So this will be, I don't know, um, sausage roll makers that rather than buying them outright, um, they will have, um, uh, you know, bought them on a higher purchase, um, uh, and they'll just be reflected in that. So whether they've actually bought their sausage roll makers uh, or they've rented the equipment to make their sausage roll makers uh, those are kind of you know reflected in here um, so there's not unlikely I mean there may be the odd bit of property in there but it's unlikely to be uh, a lot of property probably mainly going to be plants so the equipment for for making stuff and, and, and equipment and computers and point of sales machines and all that kind of stuff uh, current assets, we've got the uh, the inventories. So those are the kind of, um, uh, you know, it's not very, um, not a lot of inventory. And uh, just um, uh, for those of you who are interested, if you were to calculate the, the inventory turnover, inventory days, it works out at about 21 days, which is, you know, quite surprising. Um, you know, and a lot of that will be there for raw material. They'll have you know, sacks of sour, uh, sorry, sacks of flour, for example, and, and and sausage meat kind of, you know, and then they kind of put that into that, you know, and they, and they freshly make it. And um, I think what they what they make on the day they sell, I don't know what their policy is for stuff which is left over at the end of the day. Often you'll find companies like this will give it away to local charities and, and homeless, et cetera, et cetera. Trade receivables, um, surprising to find trade receivables. Uh, you know, very few people walk into a Greg's and say, add it to my bill, I'll pay you at the end of the month. Um, Trade receivables works out at about 11 days um, uh, and you'll probably find that there's a few corporate accounts in there, um, but mainly um, this is a point of sale. So you'd expect them to have very strong cash flow. And there we can see they're actually sitting on a fair amount of cash, 200 million pounds worth of cash. Um, uh, and even in the pandemic, they had a reasonable amount of cash sitting there. So total assets, 800 and excuse me, 888 million pounds. Um, go uh, scroll down a little bit further and we can see the liabilities of this company so here are the liabilities um now the thing we do notice here in the liabilities um no debt um so these guys are debt free uh looking at the current liabilities these are things that they um uh, they uh owe and have to pay soon um so they've got some trade payables so this will be you know the flour and the sausage meat that they bought from their suppliers they haven't yet paid for interestingly enough again if we look at their working capital requirement we can work out that it takes them on average 98 days to pay their suppliers now that sounds quite a long time to me um uh, and if there are any people who have experience of supplying to greg's um you might let me uh, know whether that is an accurate reflection um uh, you may have some distorted numbers in there but as a general rule that's a 98 days um uh, to pay the suppliers um and eu directive 711 says you have to pay within 60 days but you know the summary is that these guys you know they're getting the stuff in uh you know they get the flour in they they, they turn it into sausages uh, sausage rolls etc they get the um stuff in for the donuts all that sugar they turn it into donuts um and then they sell it pretty quickly and they get the cash in and they're paying their suppliers much further down the line so the business model they operate has very very strong cash flow so they've got some really good um a strong cash flow and we'd expect to see that in the cash flow statement and part of that will be why they probably have very little um debt they don't have any debt what they do have though is lease liabilities that's these two numbers here and these are the liabilities together that sit behind if you remember those right of use assets that we saw so you know they show you know here's the the, the sausage roll making machine that we've sitting on our balance sheet, uh, we've got it on a higher purchase, and here is the liability to the people um, uh, who have you know provided that higher purchase agreement effectively. Um, and there's really nothing else kind of jumping out at us. Those are you know two trade payables and lease liabilities. That's basically it. Um, that basically makes up their total liabilities, four hundred and sixty million, which gives them net assets. That's the assets net of the liabilities of 429 or you know effectively 430 million a um, little bit up on the previous year 321 million and uh, for uh, just for comparison 
2019, it was 341 million. So, you know, the company's growing. And, and even in the pandemic, um, the company is, you know, continuing to grow. Um, so let's uh, just check our, um, here we go. So we're just going to scroll down, just check our, our capital, so the equity. Um, so the equity, which is funding this business, as I said, there's no debt here. Um, so uh, really, it's all being funded through retained earnings. And we can see here that there's, uh, you know, the profit that they've made, um, there's a fairly significant increase in profit, although you'll notice if you remember, they made 117.5 million pounds in profit, uh, but they, uh, the retained earnings has only gone up by 100 million pounds or just over 100 million pounds, suggesting that they have paid out a dividend. So we'll check whether that is uh, it is correct. Um, you'll also notice that there's a share premium account. This has increased a little bit, suggesting that during the year, maybe they issued some shares um, uh, in order to kind of, you know, secure up their finance. Um, so, you know, a lot of companies during the pandemic, we're going back to the shareholders and saying, look, we need a little bit more investment um, in order to see us through these, um, these tough times. But, you know, this is looking pretty strong. It's an equity funded business. There's, you know, the balance sheet is, you know, they've got lots of cash, 200 million, um, looking a pretty, uh, a pretty strong uh, and comfortable um, business. Um, here is the, um, uh, the movement in equity. So um, if we look at, uh, uh, so we, if we look at this column here, this is the retained earnings column. Um, uh, and then we just scroll down to um, the relevant year because the first bit is the sort of the previous year. Um, uh, so here is this year. Um, and we can see there's the 303 that we start with. There's the profit during the year. Um, uh, and uh, in fact, I'm just going to scroll down a little bit further. So let me just do that. Um, uh, and we notice down the bottom, we can see there's a little bit of uh, uh, share buyback. That's quite interesting. There's a bit of share buyback going on. Um, and here are the uh, the uh, dividends paid out uh, to the shareholders. Um, so we see the um, uh, you know the dividends. So 117 million pounds in profit, 15 million pounds um, being uh, uh, returned to the shareholders. So the company is holding on to a, a lot of that and is re reinvesting um, uh, back into the business. Uh, and we can see, um, as I mentioned before, there's a little bit of sale of own shares. Um, not sure exactly why they're kind of, they're, you know, that almost looks like they're trading. So, you know, this is not a really kind of a, a significant um, a movement in the equity. Um, I'm not sure exactly what, you know, what decision making was sitting behind that. Um, so, you know, th these guys, you know, they have the potential to be paying out 117 million pounds in dividends. They're not. They're clearly holding on to, um, you know, substantial amount of that profit, uh, partly to you know, continue to strengthen up their balance sheet and also no doubt uh, to fund future growth. So it um, be interesting to know what their kind of their future strategy, um, where they're hoping to kind of invest that money. Here is the cash flow statement. So this last little bit is the cash flow statement. Um, uh, we are, first of all, looking at the net cash uh, inflow from operating activity. 285 million so um uh this is the effectively this is the cash equivalent of their operating profit now you may remember that operating profit was 153 million so this is just reflecting the fact that this is a very very strong cash generating business model and even uh, in the previous year in the pandemic even though they were operating at a loss of 7 million they were still able to generate 44 million in cash um this point up here restated um, just says that um, uh, the 2020 uh, accounts which have been signed off and audited they've actually found some things which weren't quite right and they've had to go back and restate those um, uh, those numbers and they often see um, uh, they can you know, often they can see um, uh, uh, you know they had to kind of re, re you know revisit those numbers and, and sometimes you see that a um, bit of investment so buying property plant and equipment so that's kind of the growth of the business you'll notice that um uh that is you know looking pretty healthy um uh they are again they're easily able to fund that out of existing cash flow so they're not having to go to the bank and borrow money um, or raise shares in order to fund that acquisition of property plant and equipment so um you know so we've got 17 million is going in dividends 50 million is going in investing in the business um and then if we just scroll down to the uh, bottom part of the cash flow we will see um uh what they are 
you know how they're financing the how they're financing the business so there's the um there's the share issue um and the share buyback so so my mistake get it the other way around there's the share um issue uh, there's the share buyback um here is the dividends that we mentioned before um and they are paying down their leases so these numbers here is the repayment of leases and you'll notice here previous year um they borrowed some money and then they repaid it so they did have a loan last year but they managed to pay it off pretty pretty uh, pretty quickly so this will be again probably a loan uh, uh, related to the pandemic so cash at the end of the year uh 200 million up uh from at the beginning of the year they had 30 uh, 36 or 37 which was the end of last year so previous year um you know cash went down overall uh, which went from 90 to about 40 uh, and then uh, we start with 40 and 40 uh, increased to 200 so it really looks to me like greg's has kind of you know they said we're not going to pay a dividend this year we're going to hold on to the the money we're going to just reshore up our finances we're not sure you know are we out of the pandemic is it all gone um you know looks pretty healthy and you kind of think well if people do start going back to the offices if we do start to see that kind of that growth in in you know sort of you know activity in the city centers um then there's no reason why they shouldn't start to grow even more and you know there's the opportunity if they can't find any good um uh, uh investment opportunities um either they're going to use that surplus cash to grow the business even more rapidly or they're going to start to increase uh the dividend that they give back to the shareholders so um you know really looking all pretty um uh, you know pretty positive pretty confident and and also i guess reflecting the kind of the resilience you know it, it's like you can have a pandemic but quite frankly nobody's going to keep me between me and my greg's sausage roll on a regular basis um that, that not not my personal um uh, obsession with Greg's sausage rolls but i'm sure there are a few people out there um uh, who quite like it so with that in mind let's have a look at their share price so here's the share price today um uh, as moe said uh, moe as he said um you know if you'd invested if you've been in at the um right at the beginning um, with the benefit of hindsight if you would filled your boots here you'd be sitting on a very very nice healthy um profit um what we're going to see here probably is a kind of pandemic um, uh, and then a buying opportunity. Um, interesting, it's come off, it probably kind of, I, I guess what's happened here is it's just got a little bit too toppy um, uh, up at the top here. So if we, um, if we kind of, you know, we take our chartists approach, sometimes people kind of put a chart in like this. Uh, and if we kind of look at it a little bit like that, we look at the trading pattern, it looks like it may kind of drop a little bit further. Uh, and then there's an opportunity to kind of trade up in this kind of, um, uh, this kind of area here so you know if something gets a little bit expensive it tends to blow off a bit um, but I you know I reckon my personal feeling Greg's is probably a pretty defensive um, a, a pretty defensive stock it's a little bit like McDonald's in that and, and what I mean by that is that you know we, we you know we do have the cost of living and we do have the sort of problem and you know but for a lot of people Greg's will be that kind of that that you know the almost below the radar that little treat quite like you know that kind of that sausage roll that like there's a donut you know on a sort of thursday or a friday into work or whatever it is you know and, and i think that greats will be surprisingly resilient i guess the question for them is whether they can you know they're going to experience um supply chain uh, pressure in terms of prices you know that's going to be inflation um uh, and they're going to need to pass that on to their clients and you know they've got the margin to absorb it they can certainly you know they they can continue to sell the sausage rolls at the price so they can maintain their kind of position uh, at that part of the market um but that's gonna that's obviously gonna um uh, shrink their profit margins so you know that's kind of the um uh, you know the the, the deal p /E ratio 20 times earnings pretty expensive um but uh, the dividend yield is only 3%. And that dividend yield, don't forget, is actually quite low. If they were paying out all of their profits as dividends, then the dividend yield would be very, very high. Um, so the price to earnings ratio is, you know, is pretty high. 20 times earnings is about a 5% yield. If you kind of, if you look at the earnings um, uh, overpriced rather than the price over earnings, it's about 5%. Um, but no, that doesn't sound unreasonable. So I think that, you know, once again, Greg's it looks a you know, it looks a well-run company. There's no there's no obvious risks 
um, uh, screaming at me, not to say there aren't always uh, risks within a, within a company, but there's no obvious risks um, screaming at me. Uh, and I think that this is, you know, probably, um, uh, uh, you know, something which I would tuck into a well diverse, diversified portfolio. Um, and yeah, I'd probably just, you know, tuck it away uh, and, and not look at it for another five or 10 years. And, and, and I would hope that, you know, it, if you look at it, you know, five years ago, for example, what in 2020, um, to, 2012, for example, um, you know, if we look at it here, um, to here, you'd have seen a science spot. So the question is whether we can continue on that projection um, for the next 10 years. Sounds good. So um, love to hear everyone else's thoughts. Uh, and if there are any, any people that are very familiar with Greg's and its business model, uh, we'd love to hear from you. Do leave a note in the comment section, obviously be polite and professional as we always are. And uh, yeah, love to uh, hear everyone's thoughts. So again, do like, share, subscribe. Leave a note in the comment section if you would like us to analyze a particular company. So make your request with some context behind that. But until the next video, thank you, Ted. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you on the next show. Catch you later, Moeen.